Wayne Landers, I'm with the Mary Board News, I'm the owner. Uh, what do you think about this, this situation uh, with the Senator? Uh, you mean uh, the mortgage? Uh, 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 just in general, uh, what, what, what do you think his job is? Like, how, how he's been doing? Well, as head of the Senate, Senate Baker Committee, he definitely does not have my support. Um, he's been the main person behind these bailouts. And as, as a young person, really mortgaging my point. It's adding to the national debt. Um, and the money introduced in the system just recently is uh, increasing the money supply. At a rate that I don't think our generation will So, say you're making 12 bucks an hour and they devalue the dollar by a flood. Uh, I got it, I got it, I got it. By printing money. What do you think the effects of, of that $12 an hour? Well, uh, it's no secret that inflation hurts the poor the most. This guy in the middle of the week really going to stop it. But, no, I mean, absolutely. Uh, that $12 an hour is a new way. It's going to take out a long time for the to catch up with the increase in price of that. I think it's not going to matter much longer anyway. It's going to see how much longer every dollar can last. Than the same thing. What kind of standards should we go on? Well, if, if we don't go back to the gold standard, then we, we should really switch to uh, what the Fed says they're doing is price stability, which means if a recession is coming, we deal with the recession, we take our lazy out, and we don't continue in these bubbles. Do, do you think that we should go back on gold? Absolutely. That would, that would happen 100% of the And if we went back on the gold standard, if you were making, say, 12 bucks an hour, uh, what do you think the value of that would be? Well, it would be $12. The value of gold today is the same as it's been back in 1900, since the value of the dollar has changed. And uh, it was funny because back when Roosevelt first took us off the gold standard, people thought the price of gold was going to plummet because they thought that the dollar was the only thing propping up, propping up the price of gold. Because of gold and they saw the exact opposite. Gold went up in value and the dollar went down. And I think that we went back to the gold standard, we, we gained a lot of the confidence that we had over the years back. And, uh, actually, I have faith in our currency once again. Have you ever heard of a, uh, an author called G. Edward Griffin? Yes. Don't ask me what he wrote, though, but I have heard his name. She <laughs> never wrote uh, a novel called uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Yes, that I know. Uh, that's why I know the name. <laughs> and, and that's to do with the Federal Reserve. The creation of uh, the creation, the reason why the Federal Reserve was created, who created the Federal Reserve, and the effects of the Federal Reserve on the United States government. Uh, if you knew that international bankers actually formed the Federal Reserve and it's a private banking cartel, would you be opposed to having the Federal Reserve abolished? Well, I have known that, and that's why I've been so strongly for the Federal Reserve being abolished all this time. And that's exactly what it is. Everyone in the system is already bankers, and they're looking out for number one, which is themselves. I think it's criminal that they are willing to inflate our currency and take no responsibility for their actions. Now, do you feel that these international bankers took this stimulus that they already received and used it to pay off all of their, all of their debts in 175 other countries. Well, I have heard that. I've always known. Ever since there's been a lender class before, moral hazard has been a real problem in this country. If a bank cannot fail, they are not going to be responsible for the money they have. Do you think maybe the bank is too big? They should have they should have been broken up or never allowed to get that big to begin with? They can get as big as they want. I don't think that's government or our problem. But the thing is, if they mismanage their money and they do malinvestment and they take unnecessary risks and they fail, they should be allowed to fail. And, and so you, do you feel maybe that they were, the reason they became so big is because they had outside influences? Oh, absolutely. Because they could print their way out of any problem. It's just like you see with the mortgages right now. People can take out a mortgage however big they want. And now they can't even do any more clothes on a house if they want to get the mortgage. I'm Republican, Bob! Dodd is very pro illegal immigration. What do you think the effect of illegal immigration? Legal immigration is on the city. It's definitely a negative effect. Um, mostly because of that. We, we have to educate. We have to give them something. We've got hospitals closed. Our education system is straight. We look at the schools in Danbury. We have serious overcrowding. I think that the illegal immigration 
Do you feel that they're draining on our social system? Well, absolutely. There's two ways of viewing that. Some people say we need to lock down the border and we need to monitor everyone in I think a rational person would rather say, why are we giving out the We can't afford it as obvious. People can't afford their mortgage or up to their nose and credit card debt, but we're still willing to spend on our government the way that we are. During this housing boom that we had, and there was a lot of construction growth that we um, was there a lot of illegal immigrants that did most of that work? Well, it's quite probable. We have and from stories I've heard, it's even been some of the illegal immigrants that have gotten some of the mortgages and gotten in the house. Yeah. So do you think that the housing crash part, partly is responsible because of it? They would have never been able to build that otherwise. I don't know. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. Oh, it's very true. I've actually uh, I own the and, and that is one of the one of the main things was that people like me got cut out. Yeah. They brought in illegal immigrants to do the work, and as a result, that the money that I would have put back into the community no longer exists. Oh, absolutely. And they took that money and sent it overseas, or they got funded up to the very wealthy people. Yeah. So do you, do you feel after hearing that that the illegal immigration was a very big responsibility for little by little? Look at this. I don't know. I still think it's, it's been mostly the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates. It's been the, the investment banks that were willing to keep the party going as long as possible. And illegal immigration may have made it quicker, but I think it would have happened before that. What do you feel about John Larson? You know, he's the head of, he's the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. That's where all the, the congressmen get their pork from. What do, you, what do you feel about his his job that he's done in the state of Connecticut? Honestly, I don't know much about it. I would educate myself about it. I'm from the 5th district, so we still have to deal with Chris Murphy. So. What, what do you feel about Chris Murphy? Uh, I uh, was a big supporter of his election. Uh, I'm not a fan of I mean, the guy voted for I'm not bad enough in my mind. I don't know. It isn't enough to try and get it. It's not about slavery. It's about the the policies he's supposed to run against. So if the Federal Reserve and the government didn't put through these banks, they would have collapsed. Right? And the smaller banks would have picked up, picked up their, their, their slack, basically. And, and, and bought up their, their debt, and, and, and that money would be dispersed more throughout, up, throughout all the banking community, smaller banking community, which would have went to the local residents. Do you think that the government, because of their policies, are creating these monopolies or just ridiculous? Well, I mean, it's, it's monopolization, by the way, it's, it's called a violation. It's a, it's a, it's a violation of the Sherman Act. It's a cartel. The Federal Reserve Bank is all over the banking system is itself a cartel. And the Sherman Act, you know, David Rockefeller was prosecuted for the Sherman Act. And now his brother, or his son, David Rockefeller, who's the head of the CFR, is now kind of pushing all these, these New World Order agendas and including our, 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 our combination into the North American trade What do you feel about David Rockefeller? Do you think he should be in prison? <laughs> He's trying to give up our sovereignty. He's trying to undermine our country. So, prison? Oh, at the very least, we shouldn't have the issue that he has on our government today. And that goes with how he blame the government. Because you look at CFR members who went to the prison I mean, Barack Obama. I'm pretty sure McCain was in there too. I don't think we really get a choice of someone who isn't really in the world. How about, have you ever heard of a guy named. Wait, uh, David Pastor? <laughs> David Pastor is the one who wrote all the, the Latin American trade agreements. Uh, if you look him up, you'll find that he's behind most of these recent uh, illegal immigration and combination of trade agreements with Canada and Mexico. President Vincente Fox has already said that he wanted a North American Union, and that was way back, uh, was it probably at least five or six years ago now, but even still, it's been in the works for a while. Do you realize that President Bush signed an agreement 
with Canada and Mexico to us guard Mexico's southern border. And they, so they agreed not to, they agreed not to well, I thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you.